The following opinions are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve for Botest.com, and in this video, I'm going to conduct a sea trial and features inspection of a revolutionary new boat from Axopar, the 37 Cross Cabin Revolution. This model's been upgraded with the Bravis trim treatments package and completely redesigned from the hull up to provide a better running surface, an even drier ride, and more interior space. Stringers have been added, making her even more rigid, especially when fully loaded, which translates to an even better sea keeping characteristic. We'll start with the enclosed pilot house. The helm is starboard mounted. The panel includes dual SIMRAD displays recessed behind a glass overlay that still allows touchscreen functionality. Just below is a row of electrical push buttons that light when activated. The wheel, which is obviously a Brabus upgrade, is mounted to a tilt base. To the left is another SIMRAD multifunction display that interfaces with the SmartCraft diagnostics providing engine readouts. Then there's the bow thruster joystick and the trim control, which in this case is another joystick and quite intuitive. To the right, the DTS engine controls are mounted at a roughly 50 degree angle. Below, the ignitions and VHF are well clear of the knee strike zone. And right alongside is a storage pouch over a footrest with a fire extinguisher underneath. The dual seats adjust fore and aft, include flip armrests and flip bolsters, and they're part of the Bravis line trim package. Under the seats are the battery switches. There's outstanding visibility through the large side windows and the single piece forward windshield with minimalist mullions. An 18 inch brow knocks down glare during the day and the forward raked windshield eliminates reflections at night. Behind the helm seating is a gathering area with wraparound seats and an expandable solid wood table on a high-low pedestal. All surrounded by windows providing clear sight lines up close to the boat. There's storage under the seats, but the aft center seat will serve as an entrance if the aft cabin option is selected. Above is an upholstered overhead with fusion speakers. A grab rail runs the length of the overhead above the windows. To the port side is an upholstered panel with a cubby and two beverage holders. Fresh air can flow from opening side doors to port and starboard and notice how they latch in two positions. And overhead is a manually opening sunroof, electrical is an option, and it all combines to really bring the outside in. Storage racks are even added to the top. To starboard, the seating can be replaced with an optional galley that includes a single burner propane cooktop and even a sink. At the end of the helm seat base is a refrigerated drawer. To the left of the helm, there's an upward opening door that leads below. At the front is a wrapped grab handle as part of the Bravis trim package. If the separate head option is chosen, this door will then lead to that head and then through to the cabin. A better way to access the cabin, however, is through the optional glass-topped gull wing doors to the cabin sides. This brings the outside in on a whole new level. Inside headroom is an average 5 feet. Forward is a V-berth with an opening port above and a mirror to the forward bulkhead. To the port side is a vessel sink with mirror and a single seat. To starboard is an L-shaped seat wrapping across the aft bulkhead. The main breaker panel is just above. As we transit the 13-inch wide side decks, the sunroof has a deep rain gutter that also serves as a full-length grab point. At midships to both sides, there's a step recessed into the bulwarks, easing the egress to the cap rail right next to an 8-inch midship cleat. A 9-inch step in the deck transitions us to the bow. Bulwarks here come up 17 inches with the rails topping out at 22 inches. Here there's a double wide seat just ahead of the trunk cabin. The same quality upholstery is seen here and a pedestal base in the deck will accommodate both a standard table and an optional filler with cushion that converts the seating into a chaise lounge. As an option, choose this fixed sunbed for even more comfort at the bow. Fully forward is another cushion serving as an aft facing seat. Flip tie down points are added to the cap rail and notice how the rails to both sides elevate as they come forward. With the cushion removed, a non-skid deck is revealed. It's actually a hatch leading to the ground tackle. It includes an optional Maxwell windlass leading to an anchor roller recessed into the tow rail. A safety cable is provided preventing accidental deployments. A divider separates the road locker from storage just behind. To the right is the breaker and windlass controls and to the left is the connectivity for the shore power. In the cockpit, choose from an open deck, an aft cabin or this outdoor galley. The full length hatch includes a branded rubberized light deck mat Wrapped grab handles are just beneath. Inside are covers over a sink and chiller compartment. Storage is below. Above, the extended overhead includes a powder-coated wraparound grab rail. 
On top of that overhead, a custom-made antenna mast is hinged and reduces the bridge clearance from 10.5 feet to 9 feet. Three forward-facing seats are across the stern and mounted to powder-coated tube stock. Premium level upholstery includes diamond stitching. The seat base is fold up to provide a more spacious cockpit deck. Large storage compartments are in the deck and continue well forward. Interior covers provide access to the engine start and house batteries. To both sides of the cockpit are insulated storage boxes. A freshwater shower and emergency bill pump are in the port compartment. Both drain into gutters in the deck that channel water overboard. Just ahead of these compartments and to both sides, there's a fire extinguisher and stereo speaker. Next to the 8-inch cleats are sockets in the cap rail that accommodate support poles for an extended sunshade. Rails run from this aft deck all the way to the bow and notice again the light deck non-skid matting on all exterior decking. Two swim platforms flank the engines and are treated with a continuation of the light deck non-skid. A reboarding ladder is to the port side and notice the rub rail that wraps around the platforms and extends forward. A sport tow bar mounts to the sides of the engine and runs across the top. A ski tow pylon is included. This boat offers power options for Mercury in either twin 300 or 350 horsepower. Our test boat was fitted with the base 300s with the advanced midsection and the mounting allows for tilting fully out of the water with no modifications necessary to the mounting area. Both engines are connected with a tie bar and there's a clean installation through the engine well. Now let's look at the numbers. The Axopar 37XE has a length overall of 37 feet 9 inches, a beam of 10 feet 2 inches and a draft of 2 feet 9 inches. With an empty weight of 8,311 pounds, 51% fuel and 3 people on board, we had an estimated test weight of 10,564 pounds. With the twin 300 horsepower Mercury outboards turning 16 by 19 pitch, three bladed propellers and wound up to 6,000 RPM, our speed topped out at 55.8 miles per hour. Best economic cruise was reached at 3,500 RPM and 29.6 miles per hour. It was at that speed that the 16.3 gallon per hour fuel burn translated into 1.8 miles per gallon and a range of 316 statute miles all while holding back a 10% reserve of the boat's 193 gallon total fuel capacity. This efficient stepped hull reached a planing speed in an average 4 seconds and continued through 20 miles per hour in 5.2 seconds and through 30 in 8.4. She accelerates in a relatively level attitude and cruises with only a 5 degree bow high attitude. As is consistent with the brand, the turning capabilities are outstanding. Full power turns have her cranking around in short order without a hint of chime walk or prop ventilation. Now my previous tests of Axopar's boats showed some remarkable handling in rough water. We did the test runs in calm conditions but I wanted to head offshore to see if we could scrounge up some waves. And while I didn't find anything significant, it did prove once again how well these boats handle any waves. No pounding, no need to back off when that big wake comes along, just charge right through. It seems that every model is just so much fun to drive, and this one is no exception to the rule. This 37 is offered in three versions. The Spider, which is an open model, the ST or Sport Top, and this Cross Cabin XC version. She's got excellent use of space and quite a few innovative features. The main takeaway is comfort. Comfort on board, comfort offshore, and probably comfort while trailering. One might even say she's revolutionary. And that's my full test and features inspection of the 37XC Revolution from Axopar. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.